Bruce, how have you been? Oh, it's cold and lonely in the deep dark night. Okay. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and the Batman is finally hitting theaters. To celebrate, we're showcasing Batman figures, both old and new, all month long. Today, we're returning to the DC Multiverse Dark Knight Returns wave with the Dark Knight himself. Starting off the packaging, and it's an extra wide build -a box Again, this time we're collecting to build a horse. Here we have the graphic designer seeing how many times they can put the word Batman on one side of the box. Barcode for those who want it. And on the back of the box, we have a nice picture of Batman on the horse. For packaging, I'm giving Dark Knight Returns Batman one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and this figure is actually just under seven inches. First impressions, and I feel like I'm looking at the definitive Dark Knight Returns Batman. For on the top, and this head skull perfectly translates Frank Miller's artwork into three dimensions. You see it side by side and it's unmistakable. Additionally, the body is sufficiently broad, and not only is there a lot of good wrinkle detailing, but there's a little bit of leather texture on the logo. Normally I don't like when McFarlane adds a bunch of extra texture, but just a little bit like this really works. Flipping him around and we can see all the folds in his cape, and flipping that cape up, it jeez, more like Buttman, am I right? One of the things I never really cared for for about this design was the belt and how it didn't have a proper buckle. Even so, it's been sculpted well and does have a bit of paint wash. That said, a clever customizer could probably cut the belt off of this one to put on a three Jokers Batman. More wrinkle detail on the legs. We also have the seams for his pants. And speaking of seams, there's actually a seam running down the front of the boot, which perfectly lines up with the joint of the ankle ball. And as much as I don't like these, it does do a good job of helping them to blend in better. When we learned that McFarlane Toys was taking over the DC license, I'm pretty sure that this is exactly what most of us had in mind. This is absolutely Frank Miller's artwork come to life. For a presentation, I'm giving this Batman one whole point. Moving on to posability and Batman's heads in a dumbbell joint. Up this much, all the way down, pretty decent tilt, and all the way around. Swivel hinge shoulders raise up over 90 degrees, forward and back with a rotator cuff, no bicep swivel. Shame because there's a perfect crease for it. Single jointed swivel elbows and McFarlane wrist balls. Batman has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. The diaphragm can twist, but I can't get any forward or back. I even soaked it in boiling water hoping it was just stuck. Below the waist, he has typical McFarlane hips. They kick out this far and split this far. But possibly the biggest surprise of this figure, he actually has thigh cut. This, of course, is to accommodate straddling the horse. It's kind of funny because there's actually better thigh twist on this figure than any other McFarlane I've ever seen. And then, of course, moving all the way down, he's got double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankle balls that swivel, hinge, and pivot. Thanks to the swivel elbow, I honestly don't miss the bicep swivel. Additionally, the thigh cut is a very well welcome surprise. That said, the lack of range in the torso articulation definitely holds it back. For posability, I'm giving Batman half a point. Moving on to playability, and Batman comes with a trading card and a figure stand. Honestly, this is a pretty cool picture. Pause here if you want to read what it says. Additionally, Batman comes with a bat rope, which happens to be pre-posed. He holds it like so, which is honestly a cool effect. He also comes with a pair of fists, the front legs of the horse, and its tail. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. For the only other figure in the wave I've looked at so far, here he is with Superman. As you can see, Soups is a little bit taller. Just for jollies, here he is with Rebirth Superman. For a kinda sorta Dark Knight Returns Joker, here he is with Legends of the Dark Knight by Kenner. But for a couple of McFarlane Jokers, here he is with Mortal Kombat 11 and the Clown. And since he is so small compared to other McFarlane Batman figures, here he is with the Joker from DC Universe Classics. On that subject, here he is with the DC Universe Classics Robin. It's no Carrie Kelly, but he'll do for now. And on to some Batman comparisons, here we have DC Universe Classics, the DC Collectibles Designer Series Greg Capullo version. For a head swap on that, here you go. It doesn't look bad, just be warned that this head is going to be a bit loose. Rebirth from DC Icons. Rebirth from DC Essentials. This is my favorite Batman head to do swaps with, but even I think this might be pushing the limit. Also, it does sit a bit high. Rebirth from McFarlane. I can't do a head swap on these because the neck joints are different. And Rebirth from McFarlane. This one works a bit better than the Essentials. To me, this almost looks like a stylized version of Ben Affleck's Batman. And if you're curious, you can look up this much and down this much. Here we have Batman from Future State. This is a very different look, but I really like it. It sits at a good height and also has pretty good range. Here we have Batman from the Three Jokers. Can't do a head swap on these ones either. Here we have Battinson. For those of you who wish he bulked up more for the role, here you go. Batman smash! Here we have Dark Knight's Death Metal. The Dark Knight Returns head on that body is pretty cool. And the Death Metal head always looks 
good. Honestly, putting them side by side, you can really appreciate the influence. Here he is with the Hellbat armor. This is something I could totally see the Dark Knight Returns Batman wearing. The head doesn't pop on, but it does look pretty cool. While we're here, YouTube user Parik Boyland asked me about a future state head swap on the Hellbat. The barbell isn't quite long enough to click it into place, but if you just sit it up there, it does look pretty cool. Also, I've been thinking about doing a full review of this figure since I didn't have a channel when it came out. That said, it has been out for a while now, so if you'd like to see it, let me know in the comments. And for the live-action Dark Knight, who drew the most inspiration from the Dark Knight Returns, here we have Batfleck. The proportions are a bit bigger than Batfleck looked in the movie. Still, this really makes me wish we had a no-goggles option. The reverse, unfortunately, doesn't look quite as good. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And of course, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Whether you're a fan of the graphic novel or just a Bat fan in general, this Batman is a great start to any Dark Knight collection. For replayability, I'm giving the Dark Knight Returns Batman one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I found this Batman at Walmart for $24.99. To me, the measure of a figure in a Build-A-Wave is whether or not it would have been worth it on its own. This Batman most definitely is. If you're a fan of the Dark Knight Returns, this is the best version of that Batman that you will ever see at this price point. Until McFarlane makes this one. For price, I'm giving the Dark Knight Returns Batman one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. But of course, what is Batman without Robin? There's a Carrie Kelly in this wave, but she's not the only one. Come back Tuesday for a very special versus, same bat time, same bat channel. For more Batman Month, check out Rebirth Batman vs. Batman from the Three Jokers, or check out this throwback video on classic versions of Penguin and Catwoman from Mattel. And of course, keep an eye out for the Carrie Kelly vs. video coming out next time. Until then, play nice and have fun.